a hearty welcome to one and all to this session our voyage in the soil of rajasthan punjab and delhi were really fascinating and were a point of reflection for us we were deeply taken up by the cultural diversity religious plurality and economical and agricultural developments it helped us to earn a lot of insights thoughts within us the cultural background of rajasthan mission filled area of punjab and history exploring place in delhi become irrelevant and unpopular when no one gives an attention to the place of the northern part it merely becomes hidden and unnoticed we had been picking essential factors required for a better life ahead so let's begin you all know that the significant factor we imbibed from the northern part of india is the cultural characteristics so here we have brother helbin to explain and narrate the cultural background he experienced from the northern part of india yes i have something more to explain with the culture diversity in the punjab and in the rajasthan the culture difference that is vested in the punjab and the rajasthan is something very different and variety one in all part of india because the dress code that they show to the people based on their religion and their tradition and according to the climate is a variety and a different one to all the cultural difference that we see in the religion is that the people of sikh religion follows a different kind of aspect in their life there are five castes that are showing in the religion of sikhism the first one is kachera kanga kara kesh and kripan these are the five essential elements that they follow in the religion and this is the, has become a part and essential element in their life all these ideas regarding cultural structure not only give us the mere knowledge but it lead us to the realm of cultural manifestation real characteristics of cultural background exhibit everywhere and each among the state is the carriers of the diversity you all know that religion play an essential role in the society and it helps people to lead a meaningful life so my question here is can you describe religion and what does it mean and can you briefly explain its implication in the present scenario india has no state religion it is a secular state it is the land where almost all the major religions of the world are practiced by their religion nevertheless the religious diversity has been a major source of disunity and disharmony in the country the religions have been constantly at war with each other men by belonging to a particular religion claim that the right to live and believe belong to them only vivekananda is against this kind of actions we have to admit that in every religion there is truth meaning great idea etc reverse the channels to see it is not necessary to go only through a particular river to reach a sea because each river takes us to sea this is the same concept applied in the religion vivekananda then says that all attempts to bring all religion to one will be failure what is needed is a fellow feeling between the different types of religions seeing that they all will stand or fall together a fellow feeling which springs not from mutual esteem and mutual respect yeah even though there are many religion in india we must look out their faith some of them are more rooted in their faith and others they are peripheral when we look this concept there is an anasian god concept this a god is basically a healer like a tablet the persons who are deceased who affect the disease uh, they approach only god at the time of disease uh, when the disease is healed after that the god is put aside this is the concept of anasian god 
so i feel that those who have faith, uh, those who have peripheral uh, faith they supposed to rooted in the faith uh, somewhat deep so dear brothers in rajasthan we have different courses and lectures regarding the popular religiosity and different religious aspects so my question to verse all of you that how does it have any significance in the present scenario uh, when we speak about the popular religiosity popular religiosity can be said as the religion of the common people it is not an institution but an attitude popular religiosity is a meeting point of god and culture it is an inculturalization of faith the faith of the religion is synchronized with the local tradition through procession pilgrimage shrine etc these elements can influence people personally to an extent we can say that popular religiosity can be significant in individual and society can this popular religiosity be the best means for transmitting faith the popular devotions arise in the encounter between the faith and culture as the religion brings the faith into a culture there are two kinds of transformation that take place first of all by introducing the religious faith the religion transforms the culture leaving the imprint of the faith on the culture at the same time however the religion assimilates certain aspects of the culture as some elements of the culture becomes absorbed and integrated into the life of the religion the religious faith is thus able to leave the faith in their own cultures once these cultures have been purified of elements for into the faith the religious faith is thus able to enter into every culture and the people are able to leave the faith in their own cultures once these cultures have been purified of elements for into the faith okay we were privileged to see the historical monuments and historical background of the Rajasthan and Punjab last month so here we have the audio visuals and let's enjoy the events we have received from the soil of Rajasthan and Punjab Batneer Fort Batneer Fort is considered to be one of the oldest forts of India it is at Hanumangat in Rajasthan and believed to be 1700 years old the entire fort is built of bricks in the year 1805 it was cap- captured by emperor surat singh of bikaner and considered it as a fort of refuge in the time of any danger emperor surat singh named batneer as hanumangat since the day of victory was tuesday tuesday is known as the day of hindu god hanuman today the fort is preserved by the authorities with due considerations the entrance gate itself shows the past heritage of the bhupat king ee kotta nu paranja ivda rajan vannu thamasikkanum mattu saugaryam konnu alla avarku avare padalmar mathram ullu sollu ഇരുന്നൂറ്റി നാൽപ്പത് കിലോമീറ്റർ അപ്പുറമുള്ള ബിക്കാനർ കോട്ടയിലെ രാജാവാണ് ഇത് പിടിച്ചത് അപ്പം അദ്ദേഹം ഇതിൻ്റെ അടിയൊരു അണ്ടർ ഗ്രൗണ്ട് വഴി ഉണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഇതിൻ്റെ ചരിത്രത്തിൽ പറയുന്നത് ഇതുപോലെയാണ് ഇവിടെ നിന്നൊരു ഫടൽ സന്ധ്യ ആകുമ്പോൾ മണ്ണ സ്ട്രോക്ക് ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള ഇതുമായിട്ട് പോയിട്ട് എല്ലാ വിളക്കിലും ഒഴിച്ച് കത്തിച്ച് രാത്രി മുഴുവൻ കത്തി നിൽക്കും അപ്പോൾ രാത്രി മുഴുവൻ കത്തി നിന്ന് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഏതെങ്കിലും പ്രത്യാവശ്യത്തിന് അവർക്ക് പോകാനും വരാനും വെട്ടം കിട്ടാനേ അവിടെ നിന്നൊരു ഫടൻ ഇങ്ങോട്ട് പോയി ഒരു രണ്ടുപേരും അവിടെ വെച്ച് കൂടി കാണുന്നു അവിടെ നിന്ന് അവർ രണ്ടും തിരിച്ചു പോകും അപ്പം അങ്ങനെയാണ് ഈ കൊട്ടാരത്തിൻ്റെ ചരിത്രം അതാണ് ഇവിടെ പണ്ട് മുതൽ രാജാക്കന്മാർ ആരും താമസിച്ചിട്ടില്ല ഇവിടെ രാജാവ് ഒരു താമസിക്കുന്ന ഒരു കൊട്ടാരം ഇല്ല പിന്നെ അവിടെ ഒരു ഭട്ടനാർ ദുർഗാ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞൊരു അമ്പലമാണ് ദുർഗാ മണ്ഡലം ഇറ്റ് കൺസിസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇൻബിൽഡ് സ്പിയേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഹോളോസ് ടു ഷൂട്ട് ആരോസ് വി കുഡ് സി എ സ്മോൾ ടെമ്പിൾ ഇൻ വെനറേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഹനുമാൻ an aerial vision of the surrounding villages agricultural fields towns are visible on the top of the fort which might have made the soldiers 
to spot the encroachment of enemies the hard work intelligence and practical mind of rajasthanis were manifested in that monument this was a sight caught our attention which shows the affection to the creatures a bowl of water and a little food is kept for feeding thus they all always try to care and respect the animals our journey in the soil of rajasthan reached in the famous land sri ganga nagar the land of fruits and dates in the heart of the city situated a famous institution called sri jagadamba and vidyalayam which is the abode of people of differently abled in 1958 sri swami brahmananda deva ji founded sri jagadamba and vidyalayam for the blind people in the villages one of the reputed mentally disabled institution in the ganga nagar always seek betterment and growth of the handicapped people it was started with 10 students in the beginning but now it covers more than 300 pupils we were amazed and wondered after experiencing and listening their talents and calibers we could see blind reading and writing dumb speak and deaf listen and speak it is an institution a ray of hope and beacon of light to many in villages and peripheries the special care and concern of the in charges towards students motivated them to develop and foster their lives and talents and made them to stand in their own legs We felt this institution a beautiful asylum where many buds blossom which could have withered away in the sophisticated world. Animals are anima of Rajasthan. At the very entrance to Gaushala, we felt cattle rearing has a key role in promoting Rajasthan's rich culture. preservation of a large varieties of cows and oxen with utmost care shows how animal friendly they are seeing the motherly care given for animals we felt rajasthanis could deconstruct the usage of pronoun for animal species as he or she in lieu of it they give a human care for them even doctors and ambulance are facilitated for their healthy survival never they allow machines to milk cows or oxen rajasthan is famous for its uh, its uh, livestock and in rajasthan 2012 was the year when the last census took place in 2007 there was uh, the census and there was a huge change we can notice between 2007 and 2012 all together we can say that uh, as per census 2012 in rajasthan there are 577 lakhs cattle including horses and camels when we talk about rajasthan they are considered to be very vital in local economy and that's why and when we talk about the cattle there are indigenous varieties which is around 80% and rest 20% is non descript or cross bred cattle in rajasthan we have got one privately owned uh, farm where 
around 1700 cattle are conserved and these cattle are especially stray animals and those who those animals who met accident and they were bought in that farm and where they treat them and they conserve them in uh, that farm around 61 farm workers are there and all the milking is done manually and around 17 farm people are engaged in that and they take care of them apart from that they have got some small processing unit where they make local uh, make uh, ghee for local market and uh, local people they do help financially to support that farm so we can understand that livestock especially cattle plays an important role in the economy of Rajasthan respect and affection given to animals are really a hope of India showing unestinguished spirit of our eco-friendly ancestors. Dates back to the ancient India, it is to be proud that there existed a civilization which was sophisticated and equivalent to the modern civilized pattern. And it is quite mysterious that the civilization was developed in Kalibangan, Rajasthan, which existed near the river of Gagar, which is also known as Saraswati today. It is saying that this civilization was existing between 3500 BC to 2500 BC. This was the first site excavated before Harpa and Mohanjadaro. In Kalibangan, there is a museum in front of this site, which is maintained and supervised by the Archaeological Survey of India. The museum decifies ancient civilization in its totality. The excavated stuffs contains mostly terracotta figurines, bricks, toys, seals, pots, etc. They use certain types of weights and measurements which is made up of shaped stones. The ornaments were made by ivories, coral, stones, etc. The pots and bricks were decorated. There are also proofs for usage of weapons like bow and arrow, axe, etc. There was the ruins of Dices and the statue of unhorned rhinoceros were the proofs that the people of that age were fond of dancing and recreation. The main reason for the abandonment of Kalibanga civilization was the change in the course of river Gawar, so called Saraswati, today. Although we experience a sense of wonder and amaze at the ancient civilization of India, it was a huge treasure in the archives of memory. Red Fort Red Fort is a historic fort in the city of Delhi in India. It was the main residence of the emperors of the Mughal dynasty for nearly 200 years. It is located in the center of Delhi. It was the ceremonial and political center of the Mughal state and the setting for events critically impacting the region. Every year on the Independence Day of India, the Prime Minister hosts the Indian flag, tricolor flag, at the main gate of the fort and delivers a nationally broadcast speech from its ramparts. The Red Fort is the largest monument in Delhi and hundreds of tourists. Jallianwala Bagh Jallianwala Bagh is a public garden in Amritsar famous for one of the most tragu yet landmark events in the history of India. This place is known for a great massacre called Jallianwala Bagh Massacre, also known as the Amritsar Massacre. 
The incident had taken place on 13th April 1919 when troops of the British Indian Army under the command of Colonel Rajihalt Dyer fired rifles into a crowd of Indians who had gathered in Jallianwala Bagh, Amritsar, Punjab. The civilians had assembled for a peaceful protest to condemn the arrest and deportation of two national leaders, Satyapal and Saifuddin Kichlu. There is a well inside Jallianwala Bagh into which many people including children jumped to save themselves from the firing. Also the portion of the wall with bullet marks along is well preserved as a memorial. Kutub Minar The Kutub Minar is the second tallest minaret in the world made up of bricks. Kutub Minar is a 73 meters tall tampering tower of five stories with a 14.3 meters that is 47 feet base diameter reducing to 2.7 meters 9 feet at the top of the peak. It contains a spiral staircase of 379 steps. The tower was built by Kutub at Din Alay in 1193. The purpose of its construction was to celebrate Muslim dominance in Delhi after the defeat of Delhi's last Hindu ruler. The tower is included with five stories and projecting balconies. The first three stories of the Kutub Minar are made of red stone and the last two are made of marble and sandstone. The tower is a historical moment and place situated at Delhi. Lotus Temple, which is situated in South Delhi, symbolizes religious harmony and unity. The lotus-shaped temple, which is erected amidst water, resembles an original scene of nature. The Lotus Temple comes under a Baha'i religion which propagates Baha'i faith aiming to bring everyone under one umbrella without any discrimination on caste, creed and color. Different people from diverse religions and nations gather for witnessing the architectural marvel and serenity of harmonious religious attitude. Inside the temple, we could not find any pictures, statues or idols, but it is a giant hall which can occupy a large flock of people that itself ignited our mind to think about true religious concept where every human is considered equally and valued without any kind of discrimination. We felt a universal religion which accepts everyone is more better than a particular religion which creates disparities. Strict silence is demanded to realize the presence of God. This pantheistic approach to God is best to eradicate all the mischievous deeds of man. Even though we are by birth structured in a particular religion, our attitude must be of a universal religion accepting everyone. Another historical place we visited is Golden Temple in Amritsar. Enumerating its historical background does not sound necessary. It's all available with a touch in Google. But we would like to share something that which has caught our attention. Cover the head with a scarf, walk barefoot, do not make noise are all mandatory disciplines demanded by the authorities. 
we entered to temple washing our feet what we saw inside the campus was people are so devotedly involved in prayer some take bath in the punya tirtha some prostrate facing temple some are dedicatedly immersed in prayer there are volunteers to keep the surroundings clean so the premises are very hygiene as the hallmark of sikh all inclusive nature is manifested in the langar they provide everyone without any distinction of caste creed color religion unifies under one roof for sharing meal we encountered a unity in diversity and a confluence of feeling oneness there we do not find any fencing that box particular people the gate is opened for all for every creed what inspired us most was the concept of seeing religion as an attitude rather than institutions historical monuments to cast the realm of patriotic and aesthetic feeling we experienced in the northern part of india and the and the feeling of liberation help us to eradicate all the misconceptions and prejudices we had in our mind so we had a liberative mentality and the aesthetic and patriotic feeling when we were in the northern part of india in the soil of rajasthan and punjab the last recipe which add flavor and color to a presentation is the village experience you you all know that village makes india and village is the essential part the soul of india rest in the villages so here we have brother to briefly explain the experience he received from villages all that we have heard and seen or studied about the culture and all was a really an experience one for all but it was clear that when we ha- had gone for the real experience of the punjab and the rajasthan how shown a great interest in everyone's life it was really deepening our interest in the land of punjab and rajasthan by sharing or experiencing their real life and being with the people during our village experiences really i was taken up by the culture of the hospitality in short we can say punjab we were really witnessing the sanskrit slogan adhi devo bhava they see nature as a mother the premises of the houses they take care of all their domestic animals as their own children or like a son or a daughter the house and the premises were seen as like vasudeva kudumbagam a vision of vaikya mohammad bashir levinasian concept of face of the other which speaks in and through the face signifies a realm of transcendence that violate what merely appear even though villagers are seen poor and downtrodden there is a realm that which transcend from the mere phenomenon in kantian concept of nomenon knowing itself depriving all other heterogeneous elements we can find in them a pure heart with love affection and care the villagers are hard working and helping minded this is not a mere appearance but an expression a manifestation of their inner self to thrive for existence and survival people are found very religious minded according to kierkegaard man has an absolute duty towards god reconnecting ourselves to god we realized the people in village were striving to fulfill his or her inner duty towards the god as kant denotes categorical imperative within himself to answer the moral vocation therefore they are receptive towards the religious matter hence it is clear that north india is a fertile land for missionary works percentage of villagers are farmers 
who works under any of the samindar. There is a visible disparity between the rich elite class and the poor working class. The elite class, see working class, or the so-called villagers as mere objects who can maximize their wealth. As Albert Camus comments, the delusion of power is seen, or in other words, the dominance of authority is seen. The authority do not heed the cry of the poor. Therefore, a realm of emancipation must be opened, determining to fight for justice. A Heideggerian concept of destruction, destructing in order to construct, has to be applied. Overpower authority of elite class must be toppled down to empower working class. Only an attempt to know and realize the essential aspects of India. We know India when we know its cultural, historical and religious factors.